Now from today we will start the uh, comparison of averages which is another type of the statistical analysis. So in these statistical tests we are going to see that how we can compare the average values, how we can compare the mean values. So often uh, we need a comparison of averages in statistical analysis we need to compare the mean values and the general question in this um, query or in this analysis is is the observed difference between the average of two samples significant or is it due to the chance sampling error. So this is a general question which is behind which forms the basis of every test of comparison of averages every test for the comparison of mean values that is the observed difference between the average of two samples significant so should we consider this difference as the significant difference or is it due to the chance sampling error so this is the main question that needs to be answered during this uh, statistical analysis so for that purpose to answer this question a test is needed to check the significance of a difference between the averages of two samples and because we are talking about the statistical test so we have to put down the hypothesis so the general hypothesis for the comparison of averages are the null hypothesis first so the null hypothesis the general null hypothesis is samples are drawn from populations with identical averages and any observed difference between the samples is due to sampling error so this is the general null hypothesis that the samples they are drawn from populations with identical mean values and the observed differences in the sample means they are because of the sampling errors. So this is the null hypothesis. Then the two-tailed alternate hypothesis is that samples are taken from populations with different averages and observed differences between the samples cannot be accounted for by sampling error. So in this um, alternate hypothesis, we are assuming the two populations to have different mean values. So we are not nominating any specific population to have the greater value of mean. Rather, we are just saying that these populations are with different averages right and the observed differences in the sample means they are significant enough that they cannot be ignored to be accounted for by the sampling error alone so this is the two-tailed alternate hypothesis then we have the one-tailed alternate hypothesis and in the one-tailed alternate hypothesis we nominate a sample to have a larger mean value so a nominated sample is drawn from a population with a larger average than that from which the other is drawn, right? So these are the hypotheses in general. Now before we start the statistical procedure, uh, there are some concepts and definitions that need to be discussed before starting the uh, statistical analysis. And the first one of these concepts is the concept of matched and unmatched observations, right? So matched observations are taken from those samples in which the same variable is measured twice on each subject under different conditions or different times. So it means that the same variable, the variable that we are studying, the study variable, it is measured twice on each subject of the population under different conditions or different times. So what does it mean is that we are recording the same variable but we are recording the same variable two times from each unit in the population. And why we are taking that two times from each subject so there must be a change that we want to study the effect of, right? So we are taking these two measurements under different conditions or in different times. And we want to see the difference between the values between the variable of the same subject under these different conditions or under these different times. So these are commonly called as repeated measures. Why these are called as repeated measures? Because the observation is repeatedly measured, right? That is why this is known as the repeated measures test. And the example is masses of 10 birds on day one and masses of same 10 birds a week later. Then we have the unmatched observations and the unmatched observations are 
those samples in which the same variable is measured from two groups of subjects. So in this case, we are not taking the repeated measures, rather we are taking the observations, we are taking the measurements only once of the same variable, but this time they are taken from two groups of subjects, right? So these uh, populations, they are different from each other. For example, masses of 10 birds from one side and of another 10 birds from another side, right? So in the previous uh, example, we saw that the masses of the 10 birds are measured on day one and masses of the same 10 birds are measured again a week later. And in this example, we are taking the masses of 10 birds from one side and of another 10 birds from another side. So in both cases, we have two groups, but in the matched observations, these two groups are matched. So these are paired observations. And in the other case in which the unmatched observations are there, so in that unmatched observations, these birds are different. There are 10 birds from the other side and 10 birds from the other side, right? So this is a simple illustration in the form of table to understand the difference between the matched and the unmatched observation. So in the first table, as you can see that the first column refers to the sample units. So there are 10 sample units, there are 10 birds, and these same 10 birds, they are measured twice for the same variable, sample A and sample B. So they are taken from the same sample units. And then in the unmatched observations, again, we have 20 types of 20 uh, different observations, but these 20 observations, they are taken from two different populations, right? So in the sample A, we have 10 birds, and in the sample B, we have another 10 birds. So this is the difference between the matched and unmatched observations. Now we see some other example like the month-wise number of hospital admissions in Islamabad in 2001. And if we want to compare them with the month-wise number of hospital admissions in Islamabad in 2019. Then another scenario, we take the month-wise number of hospital admissions in Islamabad in 2019 and we want to compare them with the month-wise number of hospital admissions in Peshawar in 2019. So now these are two different scenarios. So in the first scenario we can see that the unit of sampling is same, right? The unit of sampling, unit of taking observation is same but the observations are being taken on different times. So this one is the matched observation. And then in the second example, we can see that the same variable, the variable is the number of hospital admissions. So the same variable is being measured, but this is being measured from two different set of subjects or two different set of units. Months in Islamabad and the month-wise distribution from the shower. So these are the unmatched observations that we have. Then we have another example, the condition factor of fish before and after eutrophication. So we have fish and we calculate their condition factor and then eutrophication occurs in the uh, cultures and then we, we want to see that if there is a change in the condition factor of fish after eutrophication. So this will be the matched observation because we are taking the sample of same fish before and after a condition. Plant root biomass is di at different depths of the roots. So in this case also two observations are taken and these observations are being taken from the same sample unit. So these are being repeated or these are paired. These are related to each other. And then the unmatched examples, the plant growth rate in response to salinity stress in two ecozones. So here we have two different populations and these two populations we want to see that what is the plant growth rate in response to a salinity stress. So in this case, the observations are not repeated, the measurements are not repeated, rather they're taken from two different groups. So this is an unmatched observation. And then if we want to see the difference in cholesterol levels between females and males. 
So the variable is the cholesterol levels and the steady groups are females and males. So these are also unmatched observations. And now here is another concept that we need to study uh, when we are studying the comparison of averages in statistics and this one is the concept of normal distribution. Because most of the statistical analysis that we use for the comparison of mean values, they assume that the uh, observations they are normally distributed, right? So the comparison of averages assumes that observations are normally distributed, so they, they should follow a normal curve. Uh, because a probability distribution specifies the probability of getting an observation in a particular range of values. So uh, you remember the uh, distribution of uh, probability from a normal curve that we discussed in the previous lectures. So we can actually define the probability distribution by using the properties of normal curve. And we can actually get the property uh, probability of getting an observation in a particular range of values by seeing the properties of the normal curve. So the normal distribution is the familiar bell-shaped curve and there is a high probability of getting an observation near the middle and there is a lower probability away from the middle. Right. So here we have a perfectly normal distribution which is a perfect bell-shaped curve. So in this curve you can see that the probability of getting a random value is very high close to the middle of the curve. So most of the observations they are scattered around the mean value. Right. So this class which is the seventh class that represents the mean value and most of the observations they are scattered around this value. And as we move away from this center of the curve, the probability of getting a value gradually decreases until we reach the first class and the 13th class where the probability of finding an observation is minimum. Right. So that is why we use a normal distribution to uh, uh, compare the averages or to compare the mean values in most of the statistical analyses. Now in contrast uh, to this, not sorry, not in contrast to this rather, there is another uh, curve, there is another distribution which is not perfectly normal distribution, rather this is near normal distribution. So why we are considering this one as the near normal distribution because this is a unimodal data, you can see that there is only one peak and in this distribution as well the values they are mainly centered in the middle and as we go away from the middle the probability of finding a value gradually decreases so this is not a perfect normal curve rather this is a near normal distribution and this distribution can be used so the uh, comparison of averages tests they can be applied on this kind of distribution as well because it is sometimes very hard to find a perfectly normal curve so near normal distributions in which uh, the distribution is unimodal and the most of the observations they are scattered around the middle value so that kind of uh, uh, graph or that kind of uh, data that can be used for the analysis of comparison of mean values So now we see the contrasting type of the graphs. So these type of the graphs, these type of the histogram. So this shows a non-normal distribution. So this is a not normal distribution. And you can see that values are skewed to one side. So one side of the distribution, it has very few values. And the other side of the distribution has quite a large number of values. And the this concentration is not in the middle of the curve it is not in the middle of the distribution rather this is only on one side so this is not a normal distribution so this is a non-normal distribution then we have another uh, example of a non-normal distribution in which we can see no trend so you can see that there is no tr trend and you cannot identify the central value that where the observations are scattered and you cannot apply the rules of uh, standard error and the rules of probability on this type of the distribution of observations. So normal distribution is 
a requirement for most of the tests which uh, require the or which are used for the comparison of mean values. So our data should be normally distributed. So what if we have the data which is not normally distributed, right? So what should we do with that data? Should we leave that data or should we find some other solution? So for that kind of the data which is not normally distributed, we can adopt uh, different approaches like we can adopt the approach of data transformation. We can log transform the data. So log transformation, it often gives the normalization of the data and the data which is scattered and which doesn't show any trend or which is skewed to one side so that data can be near normally transformed by different methods and the best method is the log transformation of the data so you can log transform your data and then you can apply the statistical analysis for the comparison of mean values the other option is that that you can apply some other test so there are some tests that that do not assume the the distribution to be a normal distribution the test which are not that sensitive to the normal distribution so those type of test can be used for example the wilcoxon signed rank test so this test can be used for the um, comparison of averages if our data is not normally distributed